guys welcome to my channel i have my latte here in this adorable pumpkin cup that i got on amazon i want to do a, na a nail video i've been doing my nails differently lately i usually love the gel x method but lately i've been doing gel extensions using builder gel and one of my nails broke this middle finger here so I have to redo it but before I did a video on that I wanted to like do my makeup so then I thought let me redo my lashes and it just became like this whole domino effect of things so today I thought you know what let me share about some of my current favorite lashes that I have been loving as well as do like a fall makeup look in the summertime I like to go super natural and light with my makeup I like lighter makeup looks in general I don't usually go really heavy with my makeup but towards the fall time I really like to experiment and go more for like a semi matte and just add all the eyeshadows and all this fun stuff so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video if you guys are interested in hanging out with me then just keep watching i love adding raw cacao powder to my coffee it adds it has health benefits raw cacao powder in and of itself has great benefits and then adding it to your coffee or your lattes kind of like amps it up so i love adding it to my lattes and i'll link this cup down below too again i got it on amazon it's just it reminds me of like a little pumpkin so I thought it was like perfect for fall I got my pumpkin candle pumpkin chai candle going and we're just gonna hang out do some makeup lashes all that fun stuff I recently did a video organizing my lash stash and all of the lash brands that I use and love and would recommend but I don't really have a favorite lash I get that question a lot it really just depends what I'm in the mood for so if I want like a really voluminous lash or I'm looking for something particular I'll reach for something particular I'm super grateful that a lot of these brands did send me a lot of the lashes that I have to be able to build my lash stash I'm very very thankful for that so I definitely oh no my light probably died so I just charged it it's so weird because lighting in here is honestly really not the best so let me hook that guy up to a charger. Okay, I hooked both lights up to, I just have like these little lights I get on Amazon because I don't really have room to do like a whole situation. These are just like very homey, cozy vibes. But back to the lashes. As I was saying, I'm very grateful that a lot of these brands sent these lashes to me for me to try it and then share with you guys. But because it's expensive building a lash stash, I completely understand where the question comes from. If I could only choose one lash, like what would it be? Because not everybody's out here trying to buy every single lash brand, every single style. It's just super expensive. The lash Links is definitely one of my favorite brands. I don't know. I love them. I love the Lash Links ribbons. The nice thing with Lash Links ribbons is you can choose, like if you want a more natural style, a more voluminous one. I I kind of like medium volume so I love the V1 and the V2s and I also love that they have really short sizes like eight millimeters I love an eight millimeter for like a really short cat eye lash map and then they also have longer sizes I think up to 16 maybe 18 but I think 16 so I love the range of sizes and then also curls they have C and D curls so I guess if I could build a collection just from one brand I would probably just build my collection from Lash Links ribbons because Sorry, my kids are doing homeschool in the other room, by the way, so you're going to hear some noises. I do love all these other brands that I mentioned, so just check it out and then see what fits your budget and what you're looking for, because it depends. You might want natural, you might want more volume. It, it just varies. But today, I'm going to be using these guys right here, which I mentioned in my video of my lash stash haul and organizing my lashes. These are from Amazon. Pretty affordable. You get a wide range of sizes, wide range, a large range of sizes, 10 to 16 millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. I have three different styles here and they're more voluminous styles oops here let me show you guys them side by side or at least try to show you them by side by side this one's the more natural one this is zj15 this one's kind of next in line in terms of volume zj02 and this one's probably the most voluminous zj04 and they all have very very soft super soft fibers but the band on these two is slightly thicker than the lash links ribbons just slightly so when it comes to overlapping you can't really overlap them but i love how fluffy and soft and dimensional the fibers are and when i say fluffy and dimensional what i mean is the fibers are not all one curl so they're not all gonna sit like in a row if you will they're kind of staggered the curls are staggered so it looks super fluffy and dimensional and I love that it just looks so much like lash extensions because when you get lash extensions done you're applying sometimes fans to single lash and it just creates like this staggered look and just so beautiful so this is why I love fibers that have dimension to them and these kind of fit the bill the only thing is I do wish the band on the more voluminous styles was a little bit thinner so let's go with zj04 i used these before and i think i even mentioned them in a video so i'll use these 
for today's video and I do have to remove this that I have on now so let me zoom in a little bit okay this is not the cutest look but it is what it is here's a little bit of a close-up of the lashes that I currently have on these are from the brand lash ribbons in UK these right here they're like a really nice warm brown and I did I believe a 14 a 12 and then the rest are tens and then I placed another 12 or 14 on top really pretty great for the fall time especially if you're doing like a latte look but they are a little bit kind of on the stiffer side the fibers they're not as soft as these so as they start to grow out sometimes you can see a little bit of separation between clusters and they just don't mesh as well so the stiffer the fiber in my opinion the less the fibers mesh to kind of morph into like this beautiful lash extension look it's just something that I noticed so I try to stay away from super plasticky or stiff fibers or bands I don't like stiff bands at all these are okay they're really nice but they're not like super soft I would say 99% of lash clusters are made using I believe it's PBT silk so they hold up well if you're gonna go swimming or something like that the softer fibers such as these or the pre matte from lash links I've noticed they don't hold up even though they might be PBT silk as well Maybe because they're softer, they just, they have almost like absorb oils and get greasier if you get them wet. So you win some, you lose some, you know. All right, I took off that set. And then because oils are the enemy of DIY lash clusters and lash glues, I went ahead and grabbed this magic primer that I get on Amazon. This is a staple when I'm doing my own lashes. And I pumped some onto a cotton round and cleaned up my eye area to get rid of any excess oils. So you want to make sure that your eye area is nice and clean, free of any oils before you start a set of lashes. Before I do my lashes, I do want to do my makeup. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. I just feel like it's going to be a lot easier. And I think I'm going to start off with eyeshadow, which I usually don't really do. If I ever do eyeshadow, it's usually just like swiping some bronzer on or something like that. I try to keep it really simple. But I have just been really loving like playing around with makeup. I don't know if it's nostalgia or what, or just like going back to 2014. I've just been really, really enjoying it. So I'm going to start off with let me grab a concealer and like a matte concealer. This one from Benefit. It's their Boing Cakeless Concealer. And this stuff, it's similar to Tarte Shape Tape, I would say, but probably not as drying. And I have pretty dry skin, especially on my under eyes, but my lids are oily. So I'm going to use this on my lids and use a concealer brush. This one here that I got off Amazon's from Enzo Ken. And just tap that into the lid space how to give a base for the eyeshadow and i get this question a lot how do you remove eye makeup when you're wearing diy lash extensions because it's not like lash extensions where you can go in and rub everything because you might remove some of the clusters oil is not a friend of cluster lash glues so what i do is i grab my micellar water i have one from bioderma and i grab it on a cotton round first i'll remove my makeup and then i'll remove the makeup on my lid space and then I'll dip a q-tip in that same micellar water and I will get really close to the lash line and this like really cleans everything up and I'll grab my regular cleanser and then cleanse my face and get the rest of my makeup off that's how I get really close to the lash line without messing with the integrity of the glue in case anybody's interested I just posted a short did I say reels I meant to say shorts shorts we have kind of a base going and I have a few brushes here that I use I've had these from equal tools or like doubles ended brushes I don't know I really like them they just work if you have like a simple eyeshadow routine that you do and then one of my favorite palettes ever is a tartlet in bloom so I'm gonna grab the charmer shade here this really light almost white shade and just pat that on top of the concealer that I just placed almost kind of like you can use a setting powder I guess but I'm just gonna use this charmer shade shade charmer shade yeah right <laughs> Kind of use this to set everything if you will and then also add to the base and then i have this fluffy brush here which is from a lilac street you can use any fluffy brush that you have and i think i'm gonna go with sweetheart because i want more of like a pinky tone so this one's like a nice really light blush it's not even a blush pink it's like a almost like a maroon pink if you will sweetheart right here tap off the excess and just kind of do the outer almost like the outer crease right here and I have kind of hooded eyes so I, if I only place eyeshadow in my crease it's going to disappear as soon as I look at you as you guys just saw so I'm kind of going to bring it up a little bit higher than just the crease and I'm only going about a little past halfway I'd say and then just bring it out 
to the end to help elongate the eye don't bring it in too much otherwise i feel like it will shorten the distance between your eyes or create the illusion okay now i'm going to grab a darker shade rebel using a bit of a smaller denser fluffier brush this is the other eco tools that comes as a set and i'm just going to grab a little bit of this with some sweetheart and i'm going to kind of deepen the outer crease brow bone area here like so and then do the same exact thing to the other eye depending on your eye shape you might have to change your technique a bit again i have kind of hooded eyes especially on the outer edge you can't really see my lid space too much so this is just something that i do personally and then i'm actually going to bring it down into here to this outer corner just kind of blend that in and deepen it and do the same thing for this eye now I'm going to grab an even more dense of a little brush and this one I don't even remember where I got it from oh it's from elf it's their eye crease brush again my brush collection is nothing fancy and I'm going to grab a little bit of leader leader not like leader water leaders but leader like I'm the leader of the world leader and this one's more of like a maroony shade just a little bit and then also that rebel maroon shade tap off the excess and this I'm just going to kind of a little bit on the outer corner and then deepen that crease area just the outer crease just a bit to add like really add some depth to that outer corner this brush is not the best for blending so we're going to grab my other brush and i'm just going to blend that out into the other shadows i'm going to grab this flatter brush from equal tools so you can see that it's kind of flat when you place it to the side and I'm going to grab the shade Flower Child, which is like a dusty pink. And I'm going to place this from the middle to the inner corner. Kind of tap that in. And then I'll go in with the shade Charmer, that almost white shade. And this I'll add into the inner corner to kind of help brighten a bit. And there you have it. Super easy, simple, nothing crazy. Just like a nice fall eyeshadow look in my opinion i don't have the best brush collection this is literally what i used and then the tartlet and bloom palette and i'm not a professional i just have been liking enjoying playing around with eyeshadows so thought i would share in today's video now moving on to the makeup i like to keep my makeup light but lately i have been trying to make it more full coverage by the use of adding a little bit more concealer maybe and powdering a little bit more and then going a little heavier on the bronzer i feel like for the fall time it's a lot more forgiving to go heavier on the makeup so i'm going to start off with concealer and i'm going to use my trusty nyx bear with me concealer here and this one's a serum concealer it's very dry skin friendly and it has pretty decent coverage in my opinion i just wish they had a doe foot applicator this one does not so I'm going to place some here, here. Again, I'm going to use my Enzo Ken concealer brush to kind of blend that out. I probably should have done the inner corner eyeshadow after the concealer. Okay, do you see the finish of this concealer though? It looks like my skin still. It's not completely matte. It's more of like a serum hydrating finish. My skin looks healthy, but it still has pretty decent coverage. So very dry skin friendly if you have like dry under eyes. I just... It's so affordable too. I feel like you can't beat the price. So this one is like a staple in my collection. I do have a few others that I love, but I just love that concealer so much. Now for foundation, I'm going to use, I don't really even know. Hmm. Let me use the Lancome Taunt Idol Ultra Wear. This is the Karen Glow formula. And the reason why I'm re reaching for this one is because it's not super dewy. It has like a glowy finish but almost like a semi matte glowy finish i feel like product sits so well on top of this foundation for whatever reason so we're just gonna apply this to the skin i just i'm not crazy about the set this one and the dior one that i have they have like these floral scents the nice thing is they don't last like once you put it on and you're done with your makeup you don't even really smell it anymore but initially it does hit you <laughs> And I have mine in shade 240W. And this brush is from Haley's. It's from Amazon. I have this brush from them that I use for foundation. And then this one that I use for bronzer, which I'm going to use for bronzer. Okay, I have a little bit on my finger there placed. You just kind of apply it to the neck to blend it in. 
I just realized that I apply concealer first and then foundation. I honestly feel like I go between the two. Sometimes I'll do my foundation first and then do concealer. Sometimes I'll do concealer first and then foundation. If you're really looking to brighten your under eyes and you have like dark circles, then your best bet is to go in with a color correcting concealer first, applying your foundation next, and then going in with another concealer to lighten things up. That way you like really get the effects of brightening the under eye area. So I'm gonna add a little bit more concealer in Let's use the Lancome Tawny Dull Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. And this one I have in shade 215, just to add a little bit more concealer. And I love the doleful applicator on this one. Okay, this is not as bright as I want it to be, but we're just going to work with it. I'm going to get a sip of coffee. Mm. See all that cocoa powder on the bottom? But I'm using my tools sponge here. It's T-U-H-L-Z. I get it on Amazon. I think it's such a great sponge because the tip is so thin that it feels like you're blending it out with your finger and the quality is similar to a beauty blender like it's super soft and squishy and i think this is just such an amazing sponge in my opinion all right here is the finish so far we're still looking super healthy skin still looks like skin now we're going to go into the powders so i'm going to try to make it more of a full face and semi matte by using powders and i'm going to start off with my it cosmetics bye bye pores pressed powder here this stuff is really great. I have a few other powders that I love. I have the e.l.f. Halo Glow Powder I think is really great. The Ilia Powder I have, I think that one's great as well, but today I'm just going to use this one. I'm going to swipe a little bit of that and then very lightly, make sure I have no crease in my under eye, just kind of go over because I noticed for my skin in particular, if I overdo it with powder, it in real life, like in person, especially in daylight when I'm talking to someone, it just looks super dry and cakey. It doesn't break up, but I don't, I'm not crazy about the finish. So I'm very particular about the finish of my makeup. I don't want it to look too overdone in person. And I just feel like all you can see is my makeup. And then I'm gonna go a little bit heavier for the under cheek area here, almost as if I'm baking. Just swipe a bit heavier and then bring it up and then over here. Just kind of set the whole face and then last with whatever's left over because here I do have some texture and I have fine lines so if I overdo it you can like really it really exaggerates my fine lines and kind of just doesn't look that great in my opinion so this I just do last with whatever's left over ever so lightly and then I'll go in with a bronzer let's use the Laguna bronzer from NARS I think this is a beautiful warm has a little bit of shimmer in it but it doesn't come off as being too shimmery it's just like a really nice shade. This is a sample I got for my birthday when Sephora does like the, don't tell me this died. I'm charging you. Why are you doing this to me? I don't know. And I'm gonna use my Haley's bronzer brush and stipple this into the skin. If you go too heavy on the bronzer, I've noticed it looks muddy. So a little bit, start off with a little bit and build it up as needed. And what I personally like to do is kind of stipple it, pat it into the skin. Those are my kids toy horses i feel like for me this just looks so much better than going like this back and forth it just looks less patchy it looks so much more flawless in my opinion so start off with a little bit and then build up as needed then i'm going to do my cheeks my forehead a little bit my nose and then my neck all right i'm pretty happy with how the bronzer is looking and I'm going to go in with a little bit of blush. I wish I had a powdered blush, but I don't. I only have creamy blushes and then the e.l.f. Halo Glow blush. I love this one from Merit Beauty, but I have to be really careful when I'm placing it on top of powders because I feel like sometimes it can remove the bronzer that I just placed underneath. So I'm going to take my blush brush, take a little bit of that blush, and then I'm going to kind of stipple it onto the skin very very lightly because I don't want to move the makeup that I just placed underneath. I feel like blush can really emphasize a makeup look and then I'll just do a little bit around the bridge of the nose just a smidge and then last but not least I'm going to go in with a little bit of highlighter and I have this one from Laura Geller Gilded Rose. It's not sold anymore but this one was such a good highlighter. I don't know why they got rid of it. I'm just going to swipe a little bit on my finger actually. And just tap just a bit kind of like right there even though I feel like the blush and everything else kind of has a pretty decent amount 
um, glitz and glam to it so I want to make this look too metallic-y and then I'm gonna apply a little bit to the bridge of my nose and now to finish off I'm gonna grab my Tartlet in Bloom palette and I'm gonna grab let's grab this brush here it's like the more compacted brush and I'm gonna grab Sweetheart and starting from the outer corner I'm going to swipe that towards the middle and the front but not going all the way and then kind of bringing it down I never really do my under eye like eyeshadow or mascara or anything so I feel like this really added some depth especially when I was wearing lashes just a little bit of something and I'm gonna grab my eyeliner brush again I love these eco tools you can find them on Amazon it's everything that I need to do on my eyeshadow but I'm gonna grab the eyeliner one and grab the shade leader like I'm a leader, not a follower, not leader milliliters. Ugh, this light keeps coming off. I'm charging it too, so I don't know what the problem is. And I'm gonna kind of go on both sides of that, remove the excess, and very close to my lash line, apply some of that and create a little wing like this. So I'm gonna create a wing and then go down, I would say about halfway, and then I'm gonna grab that same leader shade and do the outer corner up top and bring it into that wing that I created kind of like so I don't know if that makes sense so that's it for eyeshadow this is what it looks like I am gonna apply lashes but I wanted to add a lip product first I do have to do my brows too I totally forgot about my brows so let me grab my NYX lift and snatch this one's in the shade I think it's ash brown yeah ash brown so it's a little bit too dark for me right now I did order one in the shade taupe. My camera literally just told me that the maximum recording time has been reached, so I can only imagine how long this video is going to be. But I have to be very light-handed when I use this, and I just draw hair-like hair strokes wherever I feel I need them. I don't want to overdo it because I want my natural, my brows to look a little bit more natural since I have so much eyeshadow on. My battery literally died as I was doing my brows. I finished them off camera. And then if you have any stark lines, I just go in with a spoolie and do some back and forth motions to blend them out just to make sure the lines are not as stark. And then brush my brow hairs upward and use a brow setting gel to keep my brow hairs in place. And one of my favorites currently is the NYX The Brow Glue right here. This stuff will keep your brows in place for the most part for the whole day. The only thing that I'll do is throughout the day if I see that my brows or hairs are kind of falling I'll just go in and kind of stick it to my skin and that takes care of it so that's it for brows and I just realized as I was looking at putting my eyeshadow brushes away I have the smudger side brush here and I forgot to kind of smudge out the bottom here that's one step that I forgot so I'm just going to gently go ahead and do that and now we are going to do the lashes. I'll link these down below. Again, I'm using style ZJ04. You get sizes 10 through 16, which I think is amazing. But do you see how fluffy they are? And the fibers are so soft. Just so gorgeous. And I'm going to use the Laced Lash Applicator, which is my favorite. I will link it down below as well. And I believe code TOSH20 should get you 20% off. It should still be working. And then I'm going to use the Lilac Street Glue, their original black glue with a brush applicator here so let's start with the outer corner and I'm gonna do more of a shorter lash map so I'm gonna omit the 16 I might place another 16 on top later on but I'm gonna start off with a 14 actually the band on this style is pretty pretty thin I think it's the other one the ZJ02 I feel like this one has the thickest band it's still thin but it's a little bit thicker than what I'm used to and I'm gonna brush some glue on the top oh that's way too much brush some glue on the top of the lash band like so and I personally like to hold a mirror at chin level so I'm gonna grab my round compact mirror here and I'm gonna swipe that lash across my natural lashes to kind of coat my natural lashes a bit this way you are double bonding if you will and then place it a few like literally a few hairlines away from the root Make sure it is not touching the waterline because if it's touching the waterline, it's going to irritate your eyes. Kind of like that. So it's not too close and not too far away. That was a 14. I'm going to go down to some 12s, maybe two 12s. 
you know what? I think I'm going to go down to some tens and keep it really short. I really wish I had some eights. I feel like eights would totally make this look so much better. But let me add one more 10. So this is going to be the third 10. Overall lash map again, a 14, a 12, and a three tens. And then I'll do the exact same thing to this eye and I'll show you guys what it looks like on both eyes. All right, you guys, we are all done. Let me take out the clips. Here's the end result. These lashes are just absolutely gorgeous. I have been really loving them. They are from Amazon, super affordable. I'll link them down below. And here is what they look like on both eyes. Again, I did a 14. 12 and 3 tens for my eye shape they do have 16s if you want a little bit more of like a longer cat eye you can do a doll eye lash map whatever it is that you want here's what they look like when you look down looks like lash extensions and if you use cluster lash glues like the lilac street glue lash things glue lace lash glue a lot of glues on amazon playlist i have a whole lashes playlist on my youtube channel it should last you anywhere from five to seven days could be less depending on a variety of factors as you're like learning i did forget to do my lips so i have this duo here from aiden cosmetics and i've been really liking this shade especially the lip liner this is their lip liner and lipstick combo and i have a 10 percent off coupon Co. they did send these to me it's not paid ad or anything like that but they did send them to me to try out and i have genuinely been really liking it it's like perfect for fall time i'll go ahead and outline the lips first and then add the lipstick on top and it's like a really nice mauvey pink and again you can get 10 percent off code i have like a personal referral code and let me show you guys a side profile of the curl of these they're just absolutely gorgeous in my opinion really beautiful lashes and then here's a close-up of the finish of the makeup look still looks kind of like my skin but definitely has more of like a full face look all right and here's what the makeup the lashes everything looks like from far away oh i am so ready for fall you guys even though the weather is not i am mentally so ready for fall so i'm just like really excited to sit down and do a video like this i hope you guys enjoyed hanging out again i will leave the links to anything that i use down below thank you to those of you that do use the links it really helps me out i really appreciate it hey you guys so it is later in the night i am filming on my iphone and I'm about to take off my skincare, so I wanted to do a checkup on how the makeup is doing. My lip product is still on. It has been many, many hours since I last did my makeup. And many meals later, coffee, tea, all of that. Hi, Chai. <laughs> She's like always oh, meowing in the videos. She's super energetic right now. But this is Chai. I don't know where she thinks she's going. <laughs> where you going, girl? where are you headed anyway back to what i was saying here is the makeup i do have a light in front of me so there's a bit of kind of a bounce bouncing off going on but the makeup is doing really well it lasted so good throughout the day and the eyeshadow as well this girl i don't know what she what is she on it's like the zoomies they get the zoomies but i also wanted to include how i remove eyeshadow when it's time for me to remove my makeup so i'm going to do that right now you're going to want to have a cotton round handy and some q-tips and i use a bioderma micellar water here as i mentioned so to remove the majority of the eyeshadow i'm going to use my cotton round and you're going to swipe this across the lid space and this gets rid of the majority of it but when it comes to getting like really in there, you're going to want to grab a Q-tip and saturate a Q-tip. And micellar water is great because it's essentially oil-free. This one does have a little bit of castor oil in it, I believe. But it still doesn't really mess with the integrity of the lash glues. And this allows you to like really get in there and kind of clean things up. Especially fallout that might fall on the lashes and the inner corner especially. Like the hard to reach places. The under eye and it just really cleans everything up so that's how i remove makeup eyeshadow when i'm wearing my lashes <laughs> i'm gonna go now but i hope you guys enjoy this video thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you guys in future videos